Okay, so I nearly made a massive mistake here. I nearly destroyed this quad. So let's back up for a second. This is the, the quad that I've been building the last few days. If you follow me on Instagram, if you don't, you should link below. I've been building this up and it's turned out pretty awesome. I am really happy with it. This is the Blue Falcon, uh, a tribute to JC from Blue Falcon Channel. And I'm really happy with it. I went through and I set up Betaflight. I set up, I thought, everything, all the wiring. I did my FPV. I even got RSSI coming down to my video, to my transmitter. Um, got my goggles, OSD, everything set up. I went so far as just a moment ago, put the props on. I never programmed the ESCs. I never went through BL Heli. These are old little B 30 amps. I never went through BL Heli and never verified the direction of the props. Uh, if you have the directions of the motors reversed, which can pretty much always happen if you wire them flat like I have here, bad, bad things happen. So I'm going to remedy that now. I'm going to try out my new prop wrench here and see hopefully it works better than the first one and maybe we can get this thing in the air. Oh. 3D printing and quads just go so well together. Let's hope that this design Oh yes, that is much better. Now I can clamp. These uh, old red bottom motors just cut your fingers to ribbons if you try and do this with just, just your hand. Oh yes, I love it. Huge shout out to the designer of this on Thingiverse. I'll, uh, I'll try and link it down below. What an awesome tool, love it. Okay, what I didn't show there was the three to four hours I spent tearing the quad back apart. Turns out it would have destroyed itself. It would have flipped over. It would have just done nasty things. I needed to reverse two motors. In doing so, I couldn't. I tried to use the BL Heli suite. It wouldn't work. It wouldn't program through that DYS flight controller no matter what I tried. I just couldn't get there. So I ended up programming each ESC manually with an Arduino. I finally got there. It can fly. I'm not too happy with the video. I think that that camera is going to have to go, but overall it's working. Let's do a mailbag. Okay, let's see what we've got. First out of the box. This is kind of cool. This is to help me do some better videos for you guys. This is the Parrot Teleprompter. I got this from eBay. This was a Kickstarter a while back, and this is brand new in the box. They said they didn't use it for the project they intended, but basically this is going to allow me to do some pre-scripted videos a lot better for you guys. I think I'll do a standalone review on this because lots of other YouTubers out there are kind of interested in such things, and the price point for this was pretty reasonable. It wasn't cheap. I think I got it for 140 Canadian which is way more than I wanted to pay but it's I think it's a good investment next up really small package I got some headphone jacks and what I wanted these for is to do a retrofit on one of these Game Boy clones to add a headphone jack to it and I didn't have too many of these style so I thought we'd give it a go it takes a, an audio and a video um, three-way connection going into it so I think these will do the trick we'll give it a try next up for testing some noisy things we got a really basic sound level meter now I have no idea how well it works or 
what the accuracy will be, but we can compare it. I can just grab one of the ones. I think we have one at work that's a, a good calibrated unit and we'll just test it out. <laughs> Comes with a nine volt battery. It's just, it's just an electorate mic and LCD display. These are not expensive to buy, but for measuring the output on my 3D printers and stuff, I've never been able to quantify the noise coming out of them. Like my i3 Mega, it's loud. It's the best 3D printer out there, bar none in my opinion, but it is loud. So why not measure it? We'll give it a go. Just some thermal paste, I think. Yep, just heat sink plaster. So just thermal paste for uh, basically uh, transistors that mount a heat sink. You could probably use this on CPUs as well if you really wanted to, but probably want to go with something a little bit more uh, good name brand stuff. This stuff is dirt cheap from eBay, but it's plenty good enough for MOSFETs and stuff that you're mounting to a heat sink. Way good enough for that. And it has a habit of going hard on you. So you need to replenish it now and again. There we go. Next up, we got a logic analyzer. I already showed one of these in a review before. This is the Sele clone logic analyzer. It's an eight channel, uh, 24 megahertz eight channel. So I don't know whether it's true 24 megahertz, but they work insanely well. You just plug it in with USB. It comes with just some jumper wires. I've got some plug-in connections. You saw them on a previous mailbag. I've tested this out with the Sele software, free download. It works amazing. So for doing some logic analyzing, uh, looking at unknown signals, <laughs> dirt, dirt cheap way to go, guys. It works awesome. For the Game Boys, I just needed some cartridge containers because I'm buying used games now and sure enough you can buy these reproduction or new old stock right out of china on ebay plenty good enough they'll store the cartridges for me perfect i just need to 3d print a holder for these now i think that would be kind of classy next up we got some nozzles these are nozzles for hot air rework stations. More or less a universal style, just clamps on. That's a monster, down to pretty small ones for doing surface mount work. Uh, this is not the exact right one for the end of my hot air, but I'm pretty sure, oh, let's turn it off so it doesn't turn on. Now it's gonna burn me. I'm pretty sure we can make that work and mount that on there, shouldn't be a problem. We'll have to remove this one first and see what kind of mount situation or make an adapter, but I'm pretty sure they'll work. Shouldn't be a problem. Next up, we got some more solder. Now, I'm gonna caveat this. Just don't even buy this stuff. I've been systematically trying different types of solder from China for some time. Here's this stuff that I got. Here's this stuff that I got. And I'm sure there's three or four more rolls. I'm going to try this stuff and just see, but I suspect I know what the results are going to be. This stuff is absolute crap. It, I've never found a brand out of cheap China stuff that works at all, but I keep trying because the stuff is dirt cheap. Now, what I also do is in the background, I went to my local source, the old Radio Shacks, still exists thankfully in my town. It's uh, rebranded as the source, obviously. Nextech branded solder. This is a 6040. This is, what size is it? Uh, 0.8 millimeter. So this stuff is plenty good enough for just about anything, including down to really small SMD, no problem. It's not real great for big, big jobs, like big, big uh, through hole stuff, but it works and it always solders up nice and shiny. It always has good joints. It always flows good. It's got the good flux in it. It just works. So. 6040 Rosin Core from Next Tech. I highly recommend it. Two thumbs up. But I'm going to keep trying the eBay stuff now and again. But I haven't found one that works yet. Next up, we got what looks like a hot end. It's labeled CR10. I have so many bloody complete hot ends now. We are all set till doomsday. This is a complete with fan shroud hot end for the CR10. It's just. They're stupid cheap when you have a problem in the hot end. It's always try and fix it first and obviously change your nozzles when you can. But when you run into 
problematic prints is just not worth screwing with it. Just plug a new one in and then you can sort it out on the bench later when you have time and get back to printing. These things, pretty cheap to buy on Amazon or on eBay. One last one, I don't know what it is. It's a Wemos. We love Wemos here on the channel. I love all the Wemos boards. They always, they just never disappoint. So 18650 battery holder on the back. And we've got a Wemos uh, 32, uh, ESP32 on the front side. Power switch, USB charge, boot button, extra button. I forget what that is. Overall, a really sweet looking little board. These are really nice, really cheap now. You can buy the ESP8266 versions for just about five Canadian dollars on eBay now, where they were like $20. And even these started around the $20 mark, but now they're down in the $10 mark. Thereabouts Canadian, something like that, when you can find a good cheap supplier. But yeah, that'll be fun. That's our haul for today. Click a thumbs up if you like these videos, if you like what I'm doing on the channel. Go down in the description down below, there's some Amazon links. Go ahead and change your favorites, your, your shortcut to Amazon to my link. If you really want to help the channel, it helps out a bunch. Support me on Patreon if you like to do that too. Some perks to it. Join me on Discord. I will see you guys next video. Cheers.